Hey everyone, and welcome to the show. By now, you've probably had enough time to watch a couple of WWDC 21 videos and wrap your head around the new concurrency model in Swift 5.5. In this series, I want to focus on the essentials and give you just the right amount of information you need to build Swift UI apps using async await and all the other new tools in the Swift language. Today, we'll focus on how to fetch data from a remote API and display this data in Swift UI. No fluff, just stuff. So here is the app we're building. It's a simple app that allows users to look up definitions for words. And when I tap on a word, a detail screen appears, and after a short moment, the definitions for this word will be displayed. So now I want to add a new feature to the app and display a random word every time the user pulls to refresh on the main screen. Let's take a look at the code. So here is the main list view of the application, and inside the list we've got three sections. And in the first one here, we want to display a random word. As you can see, the data is pulled from a view model, which is set up as a state object in our view. And whenever the view appears, we call the refresh function on the view model. So let's take a look at that now. So the refresh function calls another function called fetch random word. And this function takes a completion handler that will return the result of the function call. This is because fetching data from the network is an asynchronous operation, which takes a little while. Cool, so let's now look at fetch random word. And wow, this looks quite complicated for a function that just fetches a piece of data from the internet. Let me walk you through it. So if you've used your L session before, this will look familiar to you. We essentially create a URL request and then set up a URL session with this request. And then we use the data task method to fetch data. And this method uses a completion handler to return either a piece of data or an error. Okay, so we check if there's an error. And if so, we return an empty word. Next, we check if we did receive some data and if the HTTP error code is 200 OK. And if that's the case, we use JSON decoder to decode the data we received. And then we call the completion handler with the decoded word. This happens on the main thread as we expect to update the UI. And then there is more error handling. Essentially, whenever there is an error, we return an empty word. And this might not be the best way to do error handling, but I bet it's for a reason, as you will see in a minute. So this function looks rather complicated, and there are actually a few problems. For example, we don't always call the completion handler on the main thread, and this might end up being a problem. So let's see if we can fix this. So let me first create an async copy of this function. And then replace the completion handler by returning a word and marking the function as async. OK. So let me grab the code for constructing the requests. and then set up my URL session. And now since we're calling this from an async context, Xcode shows me the additional sync async methods on URL session. So let's pick data for. We don't need the delegate, but we need to add some error handling. So let me wrap this in a do try catch block and return an empty word when we run into an error. Now, the compiler complains since data for is an async method, so we need to call it using a wait. And I can use the quick fix to resolve this. 
and then assign the result to this call to a tuple. Before we start using the data, let's do some quick error handling. And with that out of the way, let's decode the data. And now we can just return word. No need for a completion handler now. Now, this looks a lot simpler than the previous version, doesn't it? Next, let's update the refresh method. So I've noticed that the Xcode team has spent quite some time on adding new refactorings, and those refactorings are accessible in the code actions menu. So you can just press Command Shift A to open the code actions menu, and then you'll see those refactorings. So let's do that. So Command Shift A on fetch random word, and then let's pick convert call to async alternative and let Xcode convert our callback handler into an async call. And since fetch around the word is an async function, refresh needs to be an async function as well. So let's apply this quick fix to let Xcode sort this out for us. Um, and there is one more issue on up here is a synchronous function. So we cannot call an async function from there. One way to fix this is to create a new async task by wrapping this in a call to async, like so, and then await this call using the quick fix. So this is perfectly fine, but we can do better. Fetching data when displaying a view is such a common task so the Swift UI team decided to add a view modifier to make this easier for us. And this view modifier is called task. So let's use this now. And then we can move this piece of code up there into the task and then get rid of this entire piece of code here. So the cool thing about the task view modifier is that it will automatically cancel a task as soon as the view disappears. Let's make one final change before wrapping up. So SwiftUI also introduced an easy way to implement pull to refresh. To use this in our view, let's add the refreshable view modifier to the lists like this. And then call the refresh method on our view model. Just like task, Refreshable creates a new async task and runs our code asynchronously. So let's run our code and see what we've achieved so far. But before we do that, let me make one little change to make the effect a little bit more obvious. So here I'm going to insert um, task.sleep to pause for one second. So every time the main view appears, the app will fetch a new random word and we can pull to refresh to fetch a new random word just like this. Okay. So you might have noticed that Xcode displayed a purple warning in our code, and this is a runtime warning, and it tells us that we were trying to update the UI while we were on the background thread. So to fix this, let's mark our view model as main actor, and this will make sure that all the properties and functions will only be called from the main actor. Okay, cool. And now when we run the app again, we will no longer receive this warning. So to wrap up, here are the five things you need to do 
to use async await in Swift UI. First, use the async versions of the APIs. Most of Apple's APIs now include async versions of any methods that previously required you to use completion handlers. Secondly, mark functions that call asynchronous code as async. Thirdly, make sure UI updates are executed on the main actor by marking your view models with the main actor attribute. Fourth, use the refreshable or task view modifiers to call your async code. And fifth, if you want to call async code from a button, you need to wrap that code inside a new async task. And that's it for today. You can find the source code for the sample app on this GitHub repository. And if you'd like to learn more, check out this blog post I've written about this. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below or reach out on Twitter. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.